goal isn't creating a balanced game. The goal is creating a fun game. And if the fun game is balanced, great. If the fun game is unbalanced, great. If the balanced game is not fun, I'm not playing it. Welcome back everyone to Random Slots. We've had a lot of interesting discussions over the last few streams, and although they do make it into the stream highlights, I figured I'd break out some of those so that way people can get, you know, the shorter version. Now, of course, I am part of the content affiliate program for Phoebe, so they do give me some stuff. Just keep that in mind as you're listening to my thoughts on the various subjects. After you listen to everything, let me know what your thoughts are, either down in the comments or, of course, likes and subscribes do help, and you can check out my Discord and the live stream at the links down in the description. Let's get to it. Thunder Rock's such a bad unit, they should lower its electrical damage and add a bit to its normal attack. Nah, I was actually going to say the opposite. If they were going to change it. I don't think they need to change it. Uh, the reason I don't think Thunder Rock's needs to get changed is because its purpose is... I am an, ele I am an uh, electrical sniper. I mean, I guess that's accurate. But I am a mechanical sniper. I am... Its express purpose is to kill mechanicals. I don't care about it doing other stuff. The only time it's hitting the board is fighting mechanicals. And that's why I think in general that a lot of people who want to nerf or buff phobies, and I'm not putting this on you, Anton. This is it, like royal you, everybody kind of thing. It's okay for phobies to not get used except in the niche scenario that they have. Not all phobies are supposed to be used all the time. So changing things like stabby or other cornerstone phobies that are utilized in a ton of games just for the sake of making other things utilized. So let's say we nerf stabby or whatever. Pick a phobie that shows up in a ton of games and you decide to nerf it. Okay. Something else will now get used more because something has to fill the the vacuum, right? We don't know what that looks like, and the game is currently balanced around certain assumptions of how the devs want things to go. Thunder Rocks represents a singularly large damage or packet of damage on one mechanical unit. And then hopefully displace something on the return when it inevitably dies. I don't like Thunder Rocks. Could it use a buff? I mean, maybe. But... I think this is something that is absolutely skewed by the ladder. The ladder is the problem here, not Thunder Rocks, which sounds like a weird statement, but the ladder is the problem. Why is the ladder the problem? Because most people look at Thunder Rocks and go, that phobie's crap. So you know what happens? They never level it. So it, once it falls behind on levels, it will never end up being useful in ladder games. Because you're never going to have a Thunder Rocks that's at an appropriate level to truly fight the mechanicals that are showing up at wherever you rank up to. So as a result, Thunder Rocks went from bad to worse because you're, you're not being fair to it. So at that stage, the only true way to assess it would be comparing it level 1 to level 1 and playing more of those games to identify it. And that's why I think we need to put more emphasis on that and less on ladder. I'd put more health on it, if anything, but you need weak units in games. I don't think you need... You're in this sort of game, you do, I don't think you need bad cards. I 100% disagree with that in card games. They do not need to exist. They are there strictly for the purpose of business. Because guess what? There will always be weak cards by comparison. In Phobies, I think it's even more egregious because you don't need bad effects. You could have niche ones like this, and I mean, Morbid's saying it also, but... I don't think there's a problem with the niche effects and it's dangerous to me to have super niche things because let's say Thunder Rocks was like over the top overpowered mechanical sniper. Like you put it on the board and every mechanical on your opponent's side of the board is going to die. That's a problem because then it it goes to the other end of the extreme. So it's they can exist but it's a very delicate balancing act to balance them. Bad cards don't make sense, but situational niche are fine. It's it's a very fine line between those two things. Because to me, a super niche phobie, like an incredibly niche phobie is bad, right? Let the meta and play tendencies decide what can be used. Yeah, to a degree. I think that that's where you want it to be. And things will rotate in and out. 
Phobies already has that sense of hidden information to a degree. Like you can know the whole collection, may even know what your opponent's collection is, but what they're going to do on any given moment because there are way more phobies than you have keys to use in a game. So as soon as you deploy something, it immediately starts changing the calculus on what other avenues you have. It's an extreme fun concept and it has not to be strong. Making everyone available at the same rate simply means leaning towards making everything very similar dummies. Try to get weird and finding a balance in other places uh, gives another layer of thinking in a game makes it more interesting. Yes, and I think that it's a give and take relationship for this sort of thing. I'm with you, Akune. And I think most people would agree with that, that it makes the game more interesting. You can, this goes back to what I'm going to have in my video, that we could have 141 phobies that are identical. And it's, okay, well, we have a bunch of one keys that are all... 700 health with 300 damage and every one key is that and they all move two, and they all do this and then every two key is this and they don't they they're two moves and they uh have this health and they have this attack and there's no range there's no flying there's no burrow there's no resurrect there's no blah 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 as soon as you start introducing those other effects even the the phobie types like dimensional monster undead whatever it starts changing the calculus for all this and that's fine can it be perfectly balanced? Could some of these things be changed? Yes. Is it going to make the, the difference in a lot of these games? No. Like, I don't think anybody would sit here and say Phobies is perfectly balanced. That every single Phobie is exactly where it should be in relation to every other Phobie. I don't think anybody has a good sense on that. And even if they did, it, it doesn't necessarily matter. Because I've talked about it a lot. Things like a tractor, I think, shouldn't exist because I think it creates stupid scenarios. Qualitatively measurable. It's not quantitatively measurable. My apologies. Uh, you can't just say, well, a tractor's unfun, so nerf it by 100 health. Like, that doesn't... Like, how did you get from point A to point B? That may be the answer, but I don't know. Bad good is, uh, opinion generally, so usually cards just aren't bad. People just rather spend three keys on Stabby or something, buff another card so I can use it more. I... Uh, Yes and no, Luffy. I mean, if we compare it to card games, I I'm I could speak at length about it, but as far as phobies goes, there is a like there's a formula out there. The devs obviously have one, how they baseline certain things, including old, old beauty, like two nerfs ago beauty. It was at the numbers it was because they felt it would behave in a certain manner. Turned out that it didn't. Uh, but there is a calculation that would say, yes, this is as close or is perfect balance among all the phobies. That may or may not involve all the phobies being used. That could be a different question because you may need Rusty to be overpowered given what it's doing in order to actually be valuable. Like, this may need to be a bad boom. Like, you might have to have explosion damage or poison or disease or something attached to this, which seems insane, but it might have to have that in order to make this balanced with its relationship to everything else. And pound for pound, it might be overpowered then and out of balance, but the only way to make all the phobies equally useful, because all the phobies being utilized at the same amount is different from all the phobies being balanced. It's not inherently one in the same. I just think instead of being 200 base damage and 500 electrical, it should be something like 350 and 350 on level one, still allowed to fill its niche, but it make it less bad. Uh, the problem is I don't think it would ever get used then. I think that actually nerfs it. Because in, in, unless you make, here's the problem. If you make Thunder Rocks a reasonable phobie to be used on a regular basis, it loses its identity of being a electrical or as a mechanical counter. Or it maintains that identity and now it displaces every other three drop. It would then become so good that you would never play the other three drops because it already has a higher than average health, I think, among three drops. It has the, the electrical damage as an ability. And then if it had reasonable attack damage, it's now pushing out all this other stuff because it's more mobile. It's doing reasonable damage within the range of the things we're talking about. And it has another ability and it's dimensional early in the game. So your opponent has to commit a ton of damage into it, likely displacing something of their own in the process. And you got to hit him before. Like, I think... That's why it gets dangerous changing some of these things. Some of these phobies now become too good. It's the same Cyclops, Stairmaster, and other phobie problem. Where if you make Charon on par health and damage-wise with Cyclops and Stairmaster, Cyclops and Stairmaster never get played. 
Because why would you play them when you could just have Charon and have this other ability? Now, Charon's a little bit different because no fair could hurt you. You can't cap a point with those, but you could just turn off one of their points and then threaten a real thing. You know what I mean? Like, something has to be worse about Charon, just like something has to be worse about Thunder Rocks compared to all its other stuff. And heard some people just go off win rates as variation. The deck is 1%. Why would I use another than people want the 1% higher deck nerf? Well, that's the problem is that win rates are not the only thing. So, for example, and I have this also for the balance video, but Stabby. Let's assume Stabby gets used in every game. Its win rate is going to be 50%, right? That tells us nothing then. The only way that the win rate changes is if somebody literally doesn't own Stabby and the other person does. So... A win rate that's really close to 50% isn't necessarily indicating that the phobie is balanced. It could, it's a function of how often does it get used, and then what is the relationship to the win rate. If you take out every game where both players play stabby, thereby pushing it to a 50% win rate, you're getting closer to what you actually want to know, which is how powerful is stabby in relationship to everything else. And I'm using stabby as an example, you can insert whatever phobie. The other part that, as I mentioned earlier, is not quantitatively measurable is does stabby or attractor or whatever gonzo pick a phobie do they induce a board state that is miserable that makes the game not fun because the goal isn't creating a balanced game the goal is creating a fun game and if the fun game is balanced great if the fun game is unbalanced great if the balanced game is not fun i'm not playing it that's what it comes down to Russell, Rusty, Thunder, Sushi, they have to be bad, and I'm happy they're bad. I'd be even happier that I'd find the perfect moment to play them. Agreed, Akune. I think there's several phobies. The way that, and Bad Sushi is actually one of the common examples to go along with Rusty. I agree with that. These phobies, if they were good and they were a standard phobie to play, would probably cause a miserable game state. Imagine a world where Bad Sushi had like 3k health to start. That would make it playable, right? A three key with 3k health, one move, who cares? I'm just going to walk it up, and then I'm going to fish fight as soon as you get into range. And it will be an absolutely miserable experience. No one wants to play that game. And the same thing with Russell. Imagine if Russell did like 500 poison damage. No one wants to play that game. Talking about pawns and chests alone, not their right place. They're very bad, but the correct play, maybe at some point they can become something more powerful than queens. I mean, yeah, well, they, they can become queens or just straight up win a game. That's absolutely true. It would literally be the same damage, though. I still don't think you you would play it into non-mechanicals. It would be less bad at fighting other stuff. But the thing is that you would, if you're talking about Thunder Rocks, you would never play it then. Like, literally never. If you're saying that it's not good enough to beat mechanicals now, it's, it's absolutely going to be worse against mechanicals in the new world. And if it's not good enough to displace the existing three drops, you're not going to play it against regular things. So now it literally never gets played. It's actually been nerfed. I guess that's another thing. If Stabby seems good in 100% of games, you might have an issue. I mean, it is an indicator if 99% of your games have a Stabby on both sides, that's got to tell you something, right? 